What is up, everybody? How's everyone doing out there today? Welcome back to Wildcat MTG. And um, I was looking ahead on the calendar, and you know, I'm psyched because we have Lost Caverns of Ixalan coming up. I think that's going to be really cool. So I'm looking forward to doing a bunch of those videos and then have some patron openings. And I was like, well, I have some stuff that I lined up for the end of the month for some boxes I want to open. And I was like, well, where am I going to squeeze in? Where am I going to squeeze in TSR? Uh, so the answer is, I'm going to do it now. <laughs> um, and if you're thinking to yourself, why do you need to open up a box of Time Spiral Remastered? The answer is because uh, I'm an adult and I do what I want. <laughs> Uh, and it's just a set I really enjoy opening. Uh, so today I'm going to open up a box of Times Power Remastered. I've said this many times over. This is probably my favorite set since I came back to MTG in, in 2019. There's a lot of sets I really enjoy. I've opened up a ton of Modern Horizons 2, um, you know, Double Masters 22, uh, and Kamigawa, and, and some other things. There's plenty of sets out there I like, but this for me, for a lot of reasons, is probably my favorite. I also think it's amongst the most rewarding to open. So uh, with that being said, uh, let's go ahead and dive on in. Let's just crack some packs. So as of the filming of this video, TSR boxes can now be held for around 210 to 215. They've been kind of sitting there for a while. And listen, everything is down right now, right? It's a lot of sealed products is down. So it's the fact that it's off of its highs by a substantial amount uh, is not surprising. That's pretty much the environment that we're in right now. But um, one of the other reasons I enjoy opening this is because I also think that it has probably one of the highest floors of boxes and products out there. Is that I just think that for the most part, the number of three, four, five, six, seven dollar cards, even if you don't hit any of the big, big stuff, there's enough value there, um, uncommons, rares, and of course the time shifted cards that you're going to do pretty well. So, with that being said, hopefully we do well and then some. All right. Um, and again, no collector boxes, right? So you have no collector boxes, no set boxes. This is just the draft boxes of this. It's all you're getting. And so foils are special as well. All right, we start off with an Aeon Chronicler. Not uh, not a home run hit there, right? Nothing to write home about there. That's fine. Our first of the time-shifted cards is going to be Lavinia Azorius Renegade. It does have a place in some constructed play out there, but not a lot. Not a ton of value there. That's okay. Uh, but, you know, your top end hits, obviously the time shifted foils, you average about one per box. I've seen as many as three. I've done as many as three. Um, I've also seen as little as one. Thankfully, not to this point, haven't had a zero box. <laughs> I've gotten very, very close, literally down to the last pack a couple of different times and then pulled one. But no, I've, I've not whiffed on a, on a box yet. So we'll see. All right. Henchfiend, Henchfiend of Ikor, Karavek the Merciless. One of like my original commanders I ever built was was Karavik. Just such a, a mean, mean card. And this is back in like 2008 when Commander was just becoming a thing. And it was like, wait, every time somebody casts a spell? Yeah, every every time. No, oh, okay. Every time an opponent. Rex Sage as the time-shifted card. All right. And, oh, right off the bat, foil time-shifted. Let's go. It is an epic experiment. It's not going to be like a home run hitter. This is going to be on the lower end of the foil time-shifted cards. But, uh... Again, getting one, I don't say getting one out of the way, but getting one early also means that there could be a second one in play for the box, which would be sweet. And um, also, I think this is one I don't have yet, so that's pretty cool. I'm going to guess this is probably like, I don't know, in probably, it might even be like a sub $10 card. That's okay. I'm just happy to get one. I'm always happy to get that first one, right? Because then you're like, phew, I can breathe a sigh of relief. Um, there are some other big hits now. The retro, uh, the retro frame time shifted chalice of the void is like seventy five dollars at this point. Gemstone caverns is still a forty plus dollar card, so there are still really really good hits in this set. It doesn't have to be time shifted foil or bust, which is another reason I really really thoroughly enjoy this set. All right, here we go. Tromp the domains, sure. Joda's Avengers, Avenger, not the Avengers. That's not the same. It's not the same thing. Storm uh, entity. Rare is a Draining Welk. All right, so we're another big blue creature. Okay, all right. And a, a Zulaport Cutthroat. Nice. Uh, Zulaport, I am going to guess, is going to be one of those, um, you know, multi-dollar cards above the $3 mark. It's probably, my guess is like, I think Cutthroat, Cutthroat's probably in like the 4 to $5 range. Um, I could be wrong about that, but I think Zulaport is actually has some value to it as well. So I will throw it up top. I think it's, I think it's at least at the $3 point. We'll see. We'll see. We'll try and see how many of those I can I can correctly uh, get, and we'll see how much that it kind of adds up to. Um, yeah, <clears throat> I said for a long time that the mythics weren't the draw in this set, and they really still aren't. It really is the time shifted cards that are the draw in this set. 
But uh, with Sliver Legion now still like still maintaining a price point of like $40, um, it does help the overall value of the set in the Mythic slot as well. Damnation still a thing. That's a pretty good card, right? I mentioned Gemstone Cavern already. All right, a little Street Wraith. Rare is a Fungus Sliver. Mm-hmm. Fungus among... Ooh. It's kind of like a Fungus Sore, right? There's a couple cards in Ixalan that might be okay with this card. Beast Whisperer. Mm-hmm. I think Beast Whisperer is probably... It's it's always hanging right around like the $2, $3 mark. So I could be wrong. It could be below $3. But I'm going to throw it up there anyway. What's going on here? There we go. Should be good for about four Mythics per box on average. I see that these are slightly out of frame, so there we go. Now we're cooking. All right, skip, skip, skip. Sudden Shock, Aven Mind Sensor. Used to be a really expensive card prior to the reprint. Whip, Spine Drake. Another Sedge Sliver, another Sliver, a Sedge Sliver this time. Oh, Prime Time, nice. I think Prime Time, obviously Prime Time is, is it's banned in a lot of things, so it's not, you know, it, it's not a huge, huge hit, but Prime Time is still uh, an acceptable card. Um, yeah, I think this is probably like, uh, at least a $3 card. I'll throw it up top. And I want to say again, I really feel like Beast Whisperer is like a $4 card. Um, I just can't remember off, off cuff. There's so many cards in the set, not like, you know, promoting it. Of course I am. Uh, that are in that three, four, five dollar $5 range. That's why I think it's a really good set. You may not hit every time, but a lot of the time. Necrotic Sliver, sure. Rare is a Boom or Bust, a favorite card of mine as well, a split card. And after that, a Team or Ascendancy, which I will very uh, confidently say that that is a $3 plus card. I want to say Ascendancy usually hangs around, around, around $5. And we did hit the Time Shifted Foil early, so I am hopeful that, I may think it was, what is it, literally pack, like pack 2 or pack 3? That means that uh, hopefully means that we we can get a second one in this box, which would be awesome. Haze of Rage, Mycologist. Rare is a Summoner's Pact. All right, Summoner's Pact is a good card. Um, I think Summoner's Pact is, is again, kind of right around that $3, $4 mark. Uh, so I'll throw it up top there as I'm going to kind of separate it as one of the being the rares. And after that, Dread Horror or Arcanist. Uh, I think Arcanist is right around $3.5, $4 as well. Time Shifted Cards just doing their thing. I think the uh, foil summoners pack is usually around ten dollars, given the multiplier, the foil multiplier aspect, and just split right open. That's crazy. Uh, given the foil multiplier aspect, probably yeah, it's probably like three four dollars. All right, stormfront riders, spell burst, primal force mage, mythic is a restore balance amongst the worst mythics in the set unfortunately actually i think it might even be the least valuable mythic in the set so it's a mythic we're gonna throw it up top because we track mythics but that one feels kind of bad <laughs> fibble fip fibble fip is probably a dollar or so hey our first uh, foil of the box is a fathom seer nothing to write home about there as i mentioned some of the uh some of the uh, cards with the multiple with the foil multipliers actually are pretty substantial. I pulled one in a recent box. Uh, one of the, the foil commons, dead and gone. It's like a twenty dollar card for the foil common version, which is crazy. All right, Skittery Monstrosity, Celestial Crusader, Cautery Slivery. Second myth. There we go. That's what we're talking about. That is what I'm talking about. That is awesome. So Gemstone Caverns, even after the kind of like uh, like the second reprint or, or the reprint it got from Lord of the Rings and now from the special edition Lord of the Rings, Gemstone Cavern is still like a $50 card. So, hey, pretty darn good, right? Uh, that's uh, that's huge. I mean, the box itself, as I mentioned, is like two, 210 plus tax, and there's 50 of it right there. That's That is fantastic. All right, Secret Plans after that, which is not going to be one of the more sought-after uh, time shifted cards, but that's okay. So, on our first third of the box, we already hit a foil time shifted card. It was an epic experiment. It is an epic experiment. We are in two mythics in, including <laughs> literally the, uh, the, the 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 spectrum there. You've got the most valuable mythic, and you've got the least valuable mythic right there. Pretty funny. All right. 
Fungal Breaches. Oh, Dryad Arbor. Neat. Uh, Dryad Arbor is probably about three or four dollars as well. That's a sweet card. Sorcerer's Spyglass. I think it's getting a reprint now. I think it's been downshifted to uncommon. So not gonna be not gonna be a hit there, but it is a Sorcerer's Spyglass. And what do we have for that? We have a foil rare. It is a Lotus Blue. Not going to be a high value uh, foil rare, but to me, like a the foiling on it looks beautiful, and b I feel like Lotus Bloom is kind of like an iconic card that suspend, and it's of course the Black Lotus aspect of it. Again, I don't think this. I don't imagine this is going to be a very valuable card, but it is a sweet card, so I'm going to still throw it up top there. Okay, interesting. So you're usually good for about one foil rare, sometimes two foil rares per box. Now, we have knocked out a bunch of stuff in this first column. Again, already two of what usually averaging about four Mythics in. We've already hit a foil time-shifted card. Minions Murmurs is a pretty good uncommon, by the way. Uh, Guy's Anthem, sure. Faceless Devourer. Rare is a Rada, Air to Kill, not a hit. And after that, oh, Leyline of Void, there we go, nice. That is a pretty substantial uh, time-shifted card. I think Leyline is still like, I don't know, like $8 would be my guess. So that's a pretty that's a pretty good one, pretty good. Throw that up top right there. We'll see if we can get three columns because I feel like I'm going to need them. All right, there we go. Uh, let's pack this one open. Come on. For whatever it's worth, Salt Blast, nice. Bonded Fetch. I actually really like drafting this set as well. I've had an opportunity to draft it about three or four times with friends. Very enjoyable. Angel of Salvation as the rare. Yaha. Yeah. Time shifted card is a Thrabin Inspector. Thrabin Inspector. And our last pack of the first column of the box. All right, come on. Rough and Tumble, Muck Drub, Time Bender, Angel's Grace, nice, that's pretty quality rare. Uh, kind of hangs out at like right around that cusp of between two and three dollars, I think. Uh, it probably doesn't quite make the three dollars, but I think the card is really cool, and I'm also happy to have additional copies of it, so I'm still gonna throw it up top. Ancient Den, after that, the time shifted uh, Ancient Den is, I think, uh, right around three dollars as well. I'm gonna throw it up top. We'll see if I'm correct or not, and a foil dorm dormant sliver after that as an uncommon. All right, into the second column, first column. Pretty darn good, right? Already hit, uh, well, we hit the most, the least valuable Mythic, but we also balanced that out with the most valuable Mythic. We hit a few good playables right there. And uh, yeah, and we're doing okay on that, uh, on our time shifted cards. These packs, like some of these packs, this is fresh out of the box. You guys saw the box was sealed, but some of these box packs are just coming wide open. Like they're not open already, but they're really, really easy to get. So I wonder if that was a, uh, has something to do with the temperature conditions they were kept in previously. Cloud Cedar. Dormant Sliver. Mythic is an Acroma Angel of Fury. While I may love Acroma Angel of Fury because it's, I don't know, again, I'll say iconic to me. Uh, you know, the, we had just gotten back in the day the uh, Acroma, uh, what is it, Angel of Wrath, the white one, uh, reprinted as a time shift card in the original Time Spiral, and then we got this in Planar Chaos. And so I love the card. It doesn't see play. It's not valuable. Um, it's like probably like 50, 75 cents, but I still love the card. So, oh, Dismember though. This is a card that's been climbing up. So I think Dismember now is running at like seven or eight dollars for the time shifted version of it, which is, you know, hey, that's pretty darn good. Pretty darn good. So I will throw that up top here with Leyline of the Void. All right. Keen Sense, also a really good, strong, uncommon. Clockwork Hydra, Dread Return. Rare is a Magus of the Future. That's doing nothing for us. And hey, Palace Jailer, neat. I just love me some Palace Jailer. It's not a particularly valuable card, but a pretty sweet card. Foil Common is a Thalid Germinator after that. Okay. As far 
far as uh, other rares are concerned, actual rares from the set, I would not mind hitting a pack of negation. I think it's only like, I'm going to say only, but like eight or nine dollars, but I kind of need a couple of those. Walk the Aeons as the rare. Uh huh. And a Ceram Senior Edificer. Yep. And what do we have back here? It's a foil common. It is a Thorn Weld Weld Archer. Okay. Lightning Axe. Return to Dust. Rare is a Jaya Ballard Task Mage. And hey, there we go. There's a quality hit. Kiki Jiki. Very nice. Uh, I want to say Kiki Jiki is probably about eight or nine dollars for the uh, time shifted version. So that is always a sweet hit. I will absolutely take that. And I actually really like the retro frame look of Kiki Jiki as well. So that's pretty cool. Pretty darn cool. Okay. Uh, the most valuable rare in this set is still uh, the Urborg Tomb of Yawgmoth, which also got like a little bit of a reprint from Lord of the Rings, the Realms and Relics. But I think the uh, Time Spiral version is still holding at like 30, 35 bucks. So TSR is holding up pretty well. All right, Nightshade Assassin. Rare is a Miri the Cursed. I like Miri, right meow. And a Bloodbraid Elf. Neat, good old Bloodbraid. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what's cool about the uh, Urborg, I mean, Urborg is obviously a huge commander card, but uh, there's actually been a modern deck running like three or four copies of Urborg and uh, of Cabal Coffers, and it's actually a really <laughs> pretty competitive uh, modern deck as well, so even more Urborgs seeing play. Harmonic Sliver, Mingara of Korondor, and oh, there we go. Nice. Very, very nice. Uh, as far as... The time-shifted cards and the non-foil are concerned. Um, Chalice is up at the top, way, way top at like 75 but Thoughtseize is also still like a $16, $17 card as well. So that is uh, amongst the best time-shifted cards you could hope for. And uh, that is a sweet hit. Yeah. Love me some Thoughtseize. All right. About halfway through the box at this point. And I got to say, I think we're doing pretty well. I wouldn't mind... Hitting, you know, again, I'm kind of getting greedy at this point because we did hit the most, technically the most valuable mythic, but we've also hit two other not valuable mythics. So I wouldn't mind balancing that out with something else pretty sweet on the mythic front. Sarah Avenger. Iconic in art, not uh, not a huge value, but that's okay. Mole Drifter. Love me some Mole Drifter. And into that. All right. Other valuable rares, um, I was just thinking about this as Swarm Yard is just a card that continues to creep up. Enslave, Careful Consideration, Imperio Sore, and the rare is a Polmonic Sliver, mm-hmm, and a Trinket Mage after that, neat. Uh, I think Swarm Yard is like 11 pushing $12. It's just a card that kind of continues to slowly do its thing and creep back up, creep, creep, creep. All right, Aven Mind Sensor, Harmonize. We haven't seen like a Pongify yet, have we? Or a uh, Rebuff the Wicked. Those we need to see some. Mythic is a damnation. Sweet. Okay, if that's our fourth and final Mythic, I will I will be happy with this. I will quite readily take this. Uh, I think damnation is right around 16, 17 bucks, which is pretty good considering how many times it's kind of been reprinted, right? It was in Double Masters 2022. We got a borderless version. So that's a that's a, a pretty good pretty good pull for us. After that, a Flicker Wisp also was reprinted in that, but uh, hey, gotta, gotta like the time-shifted uh, Flicker Wisp. And then a Foil Uncommon Riftmark Knight after that. Pretty neat. Okay. Well, I think we're doing fairly well overall. I mean, we hit, uh, hit really, really big on one of the Mythics, one of the Mythics. The other Mythic was also what you would consider to be one of the top-end Mythics. And we're doing pretty well in the time-shifted slot as well, so... We have three packs left, counting the one in my hand in the middle column here. Arcblade, Gib Gib Big Game Hunter, Molten Slag Heap. Rare is a Pact of the Titan, not the Pact I was looking for. And hey, nice, Abrupt Decay, sweet. 
you know, Abrupt Decay is probably only a handful of dollars. What's funny is the time shifted foil version is actually really, really expensive. Like one of the more one of the more expensive in the set. But the actual base copy of Abrupt Decay is probably probably just a few bucks. It might not even quite be three, but I'm gonna throw it up there anyway, just in case. Two packs left in the middle column. Phantom Worm, Stormfront Riders, Cryptic Annelid, Rare is a Joyra of the Gitu. Yep, can't go, can't open a box without getting a Jora. Feather the Redeemed after that, sweet, sweet. And what do we have here? It is a full common Logic Knot. Actually, really good foiling on that. That looks really cool. The red still kind of comes through. That's awesome. All right, last pack of the middle column. That will likely do it for our mythics, although I have seen five mythic boxes. Technically, if there's a foil in here, which foil mythics are about a case hit. They're about one per six boxes, uh, but you can get more than four. I've seen as many as six total mythics in a box if we're counting the foil version. Rare is a life and a limb. Mm -hmm. And after that, a bajuka bog. I have pulled a foil bajuka bog um, for a patron, but uh, you know what's funny is I don't know that I've ever pulled like a regular bajuka bog uh, i i'm actually really stoked, uh, stoked to get one of these because i don't think i've like i've been wanting to put them in decks for commander but uh just not able to find them so sure i don't know i don't even know it's three dollars i'm just so happy to finally see one i'll put it up there all right we are into the last column of the box now all right We've got a or so or Thalid. We've got a Brian Elemental. Hey, finally a rebuff the wicked. Neat. This is over three dollars. I think these are like three and a half dollars a piece. Rare is a sudden spoiling, a card I particularly like because I love me some split second. Master of the Pearl Trident as well. I don't know that Master is uh, like a three dollar plus card, so uh, I'm gonna leave it off. I could be wrong. You know what? I'm gonna throw it up. I think it's probably just around that three dollar mark. All right. another pile here there we go okay outrider on core rift wing cloudscape shiv and meteor rare is a vencer good old vencer vencer of a dollar and a blighted woodland also a card like probably not not going to be one of our more valuable time shifted cards but a card i rarely see so kind of neat just to see one just kind of like the bajuka bog i was seriously as much of this stuff as i've opened like me pulling regular bogs just doesn't happen for some reason which is crazy because Time shifted cards all have like the same, they're all the same rarity. They're all purple. There's no no uncommon, common, rare mythic of the time shifted cards. Fire Makabu. Urz is factory. Rare is a Teleria West. Uh huh. And a Vandal Blast. Vandal Blast is still, I think, right above $3 despite the, uh, the recent Commander Masters reprint. So we will put that up top. I think people really like that retro frame version. Okay, Stronghold Rats, Thick Skinned Goblin, Crows in Grip, and Rares, there we go, nice, Swarm Yard, very good, one of the better rares in the set, uh, again, I think Swarm Yard is probably like $12 right around about, so that's awesome, oh, <laughs> and then making an appearance is Snoop Yogg, Yogmoth, Thran Physician after that, uh, I think Yogmoth is holding it around $13 or $14, still sees a bunch of play, uh, it's just been reprinted a couple of times, so, you know, no longer the mega hit, but still a really, really good hit. Absolutely awesome. And the crazy part is the foil time-shifted version of that card is still over $100 right now. Mirboa, Mirboa, Phythesis, Wipe Away. Rare is a Magus of the Moon, also a solid hit. Continues to be a really good card. Uh, I want to say Magus of the Moon floats right around $6, give or take, so... I think that's probably correct. And <laughs> Talron, because it wouldn't be a box of uh, TSR without a Talron. And a foil rare, a Crater Gargadon. So we had a second foil rare. Uh, it is not a good one. <laughs> but sure, it's Crater it's greater Gargadon. You, you can have your own spot, but down here. All right. <laughs> oh, man, if that were a battle, though. Woo! Pull, can you imagine pulling the foil rare and getting a Crater Gargadon as the... 
in a mana value battle. Holy moly. All right, Prodigal Sire, Pyromancer. Dread Ship Reef. Lost Oromancers. Mythic. We did get a fifth Mythic. It is unfortunately not a good one. It is Krovax, so that put that in the bad Mythic pile. And a young Pyromancer after that. Good old young PZ. This card would have been pretty valuable at one point, but it's been reprinted a bunch of times. It was also in Double Masters 2022, and it got as like an uncommon, and it got uh, a borderless treatment, etc. So, all right, here we go. Looks like we got about five packs left. Doing pretty well overall. Rift Mark Knight, Stormcloud Jin, Utopia Mycon. Rare is a Sedge and a second Sedge Sliver. Yeah, all right. And a Manifold Key after that. Neat. Good old Manifold Key. I don't know that this is $3. I could be wrong about that. Rough and Tumble. Nice foil uncommon. All right. Four packs left. All right. We got Tromp the Domains. We got Dune Rider Outlaw. Storm Entity. Rare is in another Aeon Chronicler. It feels like we're just hitting like the beginning of the print sheet, right? Dovin's Veto, neat. That is a pretty solid, uh, a pretty solid card as for us as well. Probably in like the four to five dollar range, be my guess. I'm gonna throw it up top. Okay. Hey, finally a Pongify. Pongify still about four and a half, five dollars. Just doing its thing. Pull this liver. Paradise Plume. Rare is a Porphyro Nodes. Avoid the Nodes. And a Trigon Dragon after that, or Trigon Predator after that. And a Foil Common, a Grinning Ignis after that. All right. Haven't really hit anything out of the foils. Uh, nothing uh, nothing of, of real substance there, right? Okay. Two packs left. Doesn't look like we're going to get the second foil time shifted, but that's okay. We got the first one early enough that we could at least breathe the sigh of relief, right? The Salt Gargoyle. Shaper Parasite. Another Street Wraith. Rare is a Moranda, uh, Morganda Petroglyphs. Mm-hmm. Time shifted card is a Stinkweed Imp. A card also, I don't, it's not the value, it's not valuable, right? That's okay. But uh, another card I really don't pull a whole lot of copies of, so kind of happy to see that still. That's cool. All right, last pack of the box here. We'll do a little debrief here, and I'll, of course, throw the pricing and the summary up at the end. All right, we have ourselves a Scrib Ranger, a Griffin Guide, Necrotic Sliver. Rare is a Thelonite Hermit, all right, and... A Cloud Shredder Sliver as the Time Shift card, and that is going to do it. So we did not get a second one, unfortunately. That's okay. So let's take a look at this here. So on one hand, we did have a five Mythic box, which is above the curve. It's normally four, although three of those were uh, pretty much like the least valuable. Although then we countered that with the most valuable in the form of Gemstone Caverns, and then another banger with Damnation. Uh, epic, exper epic Experiment as a Foil Time Shift card is going to be on the lower end. It's still cool, though. And then we did hit some good rares, right? We hit Swarm Yard. We didn't get an Urborg in this one. That's okay. Summoner's Pack, Dread Arbor. Uh, I like Angel's Grace. And of course, Magnus and Moon kind of always hanging around. And then, of course, the Time Shifted card. So we hit, we didn't hit, you know, Chalice of the Void, but we did hit Thoughtseize. We hit Yawgmoth. We hit Kiki Jiki. Again, I think Dismember is still is like $8 or $9. And I think Leyline of the Void is still, even after the reprint, like a six, seven, eight dollar card. I could be wrong about that. And then you've got a bunch of three, four, five dollar cards in here as well. And that is the beauty of TSR, is I think that it offers you a really fun, um, enjoyable opening experience with a high floor. Even if you don't have a home run box, you don't hit a, a, a super big time-shifted foil card, I think you still get pretty good value out of these boxes, especially when the current price is like 210 215 plus tax. So anyways, that's going to do it for me today. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you did, do me a favor. If you're not subscribed already, hit the subscribe button for me. Hit the like button for me. And by all means, drop me some comments. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you so much, everybody, and be well.